Hey guys, so I have got three eyeshadow palettes that are on my wish list and I wanted to talk about them today and figure out whether I should actually buy them. Maybe you guys could give me some of your input as well, but we're gonna kind of take a look at these three palettes and see how they compare to what I already own, see if maybe I can dupe a lot of the shades with what I own in my collection. And I've also created a look inspired by one of these palettes that I'll kind of do a little walkthrough of at the end of this video. But if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. This is really kind of what my channel is all about. I love trying new makeup, but I also like to make sure that I'm making thoughtful purchases and I like to keep a fairly curated collection so if that sounds like fun to you, I'd love to have you stick around. So I'll go ahead and share what these three palettes are. Two of them are actually from BH Cosmetics and they're not actually that new to the market. They've both been out for a little while now, but I have just been so interested in BH Cosmetics. I love their Summer in Saint-Tropez palette. It's one of my current favorite palettes in my whole collection. I also love their Belgium Waffle Face palette. And I've just been itching to try more from the brand. And there's two palettes in particular that have really caught my eye. One of them is the Lost in Los Angeles palette, which is part of their travel series like the Saint-Tropez. And then the other one is their Mimosa palette, which is part of their Weekend Vibes collection. So we're going to take a look at both of those. Lost in Los Angeles has a lot of pastel colors. I love pastel shadows. And a lot of colors that I just generally don't feel like I have a lot of in my collection. And then the Mimosa palette is a very bright, vibrant, like corally orange palette. That's kind of a color family that I've been wanting to expand on in my collection because I love those kinds of tones, especially in the summer, but I don't really have a lot of oranges or corals. I do have some more like muted ones, but the ones in there are very vibrant. So that one is really calling my name. And then the third palette is kind of on the opposite end of the price spectrum from Aether Beauty. It's their newest launch. I think it's only available for pre-sale right now, but it is their new Moonlight palette. And this one really caught my attention because it just looks so unique. I feel like we don't see a whole lot of this type of color story out there, but it's, it's a very kind of like galactic color story. It's a lot of like blues, some purples, some greens, and it just looks really fun. Now this one is probably the one of these three that I'm... I feel like I'm going to have an easier time talking myself out of because it is pretty expensive. It's like $58, which is a lot for a palette. And I already know I have a lot of blues in my collection and just, I, I think I can probably find a lot of dupes for this one. So, so let's go ahead and kind of see how closely I can dupe these palettes with what I already own. And we'll start with the Lost in Los Angeles palette. As far as palettes in my collection that I feel like might have some similar shades, this one does have a few kind of peachy colors in it. And I do think that some of them might be similar to some of the ones in my ColourPop Miss Bliss palette. And then there are some kind of like blues and greens in there as well that I may be able to find some dupes for in my Elf Earth and Ocean palette. And then other than that, I do also have a handful of colorful like magnetic singles in my collection. I do have some pastels here and then some really colorful ones from Clarity. I was also curious to take a look at my Summer in Saint-Tropez palette that I already have to see if there were any kind of like duplicate shades in here or any overlap at all, but but honestly looking closely at the two, I really don't see any shades that seem to overlap. Um, you know, there is like that light blue in the LA palette, but the one in Summer in Saint-Tropez seems much deeper, whereas the Lost in LA one looks very pastel. And there's some purples, but they're much cooler tone purples than these. So yeah, I really like looking at each shade one by one, I'm really not seeing any like overlap between the two, which is good to know. So let's just see what I can come up with for this palette. All right, so this is what I came up with for the Lost in Los Angeles palette. And these shades are coming from all different palettes in my collection. I think I have like four different palettes plus like some singles mixed in here. So, you know, I'd be dipping into a lot of different palettes to, to get a look with these. And some of these are definitely a bit of a stretch. Like this color right here is from the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. It's um, the shade Rock Bottom. That is much more taupey than that uh, gold shade Rodeo Drive in the BH palette. The BH one is much more kind of like a grungy gold, whereas I don't really have a gold quite like that as far as I know. Um, this blue right here is from Elf Earth and Ocean. That's the shade Siren. And it definitely looks much more of like almost like a purpley blue than the one in the BH palette. There's two shades right here. I kind of left a blank spot that are missing. I don't have anything like those. One of them is just a matte white and the other is a matte like medium grassy green color. That green looks so pretty to me. This blue is my Clarity Single in Coastline. That's much deeper than the one in the BH palette. So some of these are definitely a stretch, but some of them are quite similar like the peaches. 
So I don't know, I wasn't expecting to even have this many similar tones in my collection. But the thing is, if I wanted to create a look with these colors, it's so hard to hold this up, um, I would have to be dipping into like four different palettes plus my magnetic singles. Whereas with the BH palette, I definitely do find that specific color story very inspiring. I feel like that's such a versatile palette that I would still, it would be nice to have all those shades like in one place. So I'm definitely still tempted. The palette retails for $17. It's currently on sale on their website for $12.75, which is a pretty good deal. Although I think you have to spend $40 to get free shipping, so I'd probably end up still paying close to $17 for it if I just got that. So I may consider going to Ulta and seeing, seeing if I can look at it in person there and maybe, maybe I'll make my decision. Um, and I can always use like a coupon at Ulta. So I feel like even though I've got a similar vibe here, it still hasn't really taken away my desire <laughs> to purchase that palette. So next up for the Mimosa palette, this one, oh, it just... It makes my heart flutter when I look at it because it's so pretty. One thing that was kind of tripping me up about this is that there are three shades that sort of look kind of redundant. Vibes, Pomegranate, and Guava. Those three look kind of similar and I was wondering like how how different are those actually going to look on the eyes. I did post about this on my Instagram stories and a few people told me, oh, they're actually like not that similar. We'll see. This might be another one where I go and actually look at it in person if I can. But I'm still going to try to see like how closely I can do this. I really don't have a whole lot of these like bright pinky corals in my collection. I do have some corals and pinks in my Miss Bliss, but these are much more muted, I think. I do have some yellows, but the yellow in this one almost looks like a chartreuse, at least in the photos. But then in some of the swatches, it looks more like just a regular, you know, sunflower yellow. So I'm not really sure how that one looks on the eyes. All right, so this is what I was able to come up with for my collection. I really am realizing I do not have a lot of these shades, like the brighter, like corally pinks. I don't really have anything like that. Um, and even like the orange in here, the only like true orange I have in my collection is Clarity Hot Cheeto. But the one in the Mimosa palette is much more of like a, it's kind of like, it is almost like the color of orange juice. It's lighter than this and a little bit more yellowy. Don't, I don't really have anything like that. I did swatch some of my like light peaches from the ColourPop Miss Bliss palette, but they're um, much more muted, like I said, than the ones in mimosa but yeah out of the three palettes today i do think that this one is the hardest to dupe in my collection so seeing that i mean i'm definitely still very tempted to purchase that mimosa palette that one is also currently on sale on their website for 13 um and again it's normally like 17 or 18 but you know for me i've mentioned before one of my palette deal breakers is when there are like a lot of redundant shades in a palette or even when there's a handful of shades that look super similar and those three like bright pinky corals that I mentioned do look similar in the photo. So I am going to, I think I'm going to try to go take a look at this palette in person and see if I still want it once I see it in person. So last but not least, we have the Aether Moonlight palette. Oh. It's really the blues in here that are getting to me, I think. Um, but I already know I have a lot of blues in my collection. One thing I need to keep in mind is that Purple is really not my favorite color to wear on my eyes. I do have a handful of purples. I really like light, like muted lavenders and things like that. But there are a couple of like deep purples in here. And those are two shades that A, I know I have some similar shades in my collection. And B, I just don't wear those kinds of colors very often on my eyes. So that is a definite drawback for me that I already know is probably going to push me in the direction of not buying this. But let's go ahead and take a look at some similar shadows in my collection. So a couple of palettes that I think could have some similar shades. One is Elf Earth and Ocean. This one has a lot of blues in it. This is definitely the palette that kind of satisfies my blue <laughs> craving at times. And then another palette is the ColourPop in a Trance palette. This one has some of those kind of light ethereal purples and also this like duochrome that looks kind of similar to one of those Aether shades. And then another palette that has some purples in it is the ABH Norvina palette. This one has like a deep purple, some medium purple, so there's that. And then there's also, of course, my collection of singles where I do have some more like pastel purples and blues. So here's what I found in my collection that I feel like is kind of similar to this Aether Moonlight palette. Um, you know, there's still some differences for sure. I definitely don't have like a turquoise green like that, but I have a lot of these purples. And since this palette is like half purple, I'm just kind of realizing 
I don't really think it's for me because I don't even wear purple that often and as you can see here I already have a good handful of purples already in my collection and the the shades in here that I feel like are really drawing me in are the blues and out of those I definitely already have some similar shades here from my Elf Earth and Ocean palette. So I just think with this handful of similar colors, I just can't justify spending $58 on the palette. So that was a really fun experiment to just see which of these shades I already have in my collection. And even though I wasn't able to exactly dupe these palettes, it did help me kind of get a sense of you know, what I'm already working with here. And I'm still definitely feeling very tempted by the Mimosa palette and the Lost in Los Angeles palette. I just feel like I'd get a lot of use out of both. So I don't know, let me know if you have any thoughts, but I do think, at least for now, I can pass on the Aether Moonlight palette. Um, I have received some PR from Aether in the past, so you know I'm not sure if I'm gonna be receiving this one, but you know if I did get it in the mail, I would be over the moon, no pun intended. <laughs> I'd be very excited and I would definitely review it for you guys, but I don't think I'm gonna be purchasing it myself at least. And if I, if I don't end up receiving it, I won't be like laying awake at night thinking about the palette, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I think that that definitely made the decision a little bit easier, although I'm still not 100% sure about the two BH palettes. I think I am gonna try and go take a look at them in store just to see, you know, really see for myself. Because sometimes when you can look at it right in front of you, you can have a better idea of like, hmm, would I actually use this shade? Was it just looking like extra beautiful in the pictures? or maybe it's even more beautiful in person, who knows? So, but for the last part of this video, I wanted to put together a look inspired by the Aether Moonlight palette since I'm pretty positive I'm not going to buy it, just to kind of show what I can do with those shades that I already have. And I had a lot of fun with this look. It's, I don't normally pair like purple and blue together, but I do think that now I will do that more often because it's a really pretty color combo. I mainly used in a trance and earth and ocean from elf so i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick little walkthrough of this i look for you turned out and makes me want to play around with those tones more often and it was fun to draw inspiration from that palette and it just goes to show I don't need to purchase the palette to create some really fun looks that are inspired by those colors so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts down below and hopefully I will talk to you very soon in my next video bye